Now, the attack in Gurez is the deadliest along the line of control after India's surgical strike against Pakistan. The tension along the border is going to be one of the biggest bones of contention between India and Pakistan, and that will prove to be a big challenge for the next Pakistan Prime Minister, Imran Khan. In his victory speech, Pakistan's Prime Minister-designate spoke about the need for peace between India and Pakistan. This is what he said. मैं ये चाहूँगा कि अगर हिंदुस्तान की लीडरशिप तैयार है हम बिल्कुल तैयार हैं कि हम अपने ताल्लुक बेहतर करें आप एक कदम हमारी तरफ आएंगे हम दो कदम आपकी तरफ जाएंगे लेकिन आगे भी तो बढ़ें अभी तक तो एक वन साइडेड किस्म की रिलेशनशिप है कि ब्लेम किया जा रहा है पाकिस्तान को हर जिस किस्म की दुनिया में कई दहशत गर्दी हो तो पाकिस्तान को ब्लेम किया जाता है तो मैं ये चाहूँगा ये मेरा मैं ये हम मैं कन्विक्शन से कह रहा हूँ कि ये दोनों ये सब कॉन्टिनेंट के लिए सबसे ज़रूरी चीज़ है कि हमारे मुल्कों के अंदर दोस्ती हो और हम अपने जो मेन इशू है उसको डायलॉग से हल करें But the job is easier said than done for Imran Khan. During the last regime, the civilian government would sing one tune and the military another. Islamabad would push for talks with New Delhi, while Rawalpindi would help push terrorists into India. With Imran at the helm, the situation is expected to be a little different. Remember, Imran Khan's appointment is in fact the work of Pakistan's army, or so some would say. Imran Khan has himself denied time and again that he is being propped up by the army, but the perception is that he is Rahul Pindi's puppet. The army has always dictated terms, either directly or indirectly, even when it is not in direct control of Pakistan. The army pulls strings behind the scenes, especially on foreign policy and domestic security. So, can the newly elected prime minister actually make the army bend? It seems unlikely. It would be very rare for Imran Khan to take serious steps towards improving ties with India because India will not hold talks until attacks on the border don't stop and the Pakistani army does not seem willing to stop aiding terrorists. Pakistan's Prime Minister on waiting Imran Khan was in Peshawar today he was at the National Accountability Office in the city after he was served a summon Imran Khan recorded his statement on allegations that he used helicopters belonging to provincial governments for private visits causing loss of millions of rupees to the provincial exchequer Imran was present at the anti graft bodies office for over 70 minutes Meanwhile Imran Khan has also taken key decisions with regard to his cabinet it is expected to be a very small cabinet in the first phase it will have 18 to 20 members with the representation from all provinces uh, the national assembly session is likely to be called on the 15th of August and that's what sources are telling us at this point in time And now we have our Pakistan bureau chief Anas Malik joining us live from Islamabad for the latest. Uh, Anas, uh, talk to us uh, specifically about uh, Imran Khan's uh, appearance uh, at the National Accountability Bureau. Uh, this is an appearance uh, that's come at, an, uh, at not the best of times. He is set to be sworn in as the prime minister of the country. Absolutely Krishna this is a significant appearance it's an unprecedented appearance as we would say because pre previously we've seen Nawaz Sharif had also been summoned by the National Accountability Bureau uh, while he was the prime minister but uh, now uh, since Imran Khan had been on the rhetoric that he would be presenting himself before the accountable uh, uh, before accountability for the accountability for accountability that is why uh, he uh, in a bid to prove his own words he went himself to the National Accountability Bureau upon his some now if you can 
can just walk you through the case. Uh, in February, uh, the National Accountability Bureau had taken uh, notice of the reports uh, that said that Imran Khan had been allegedly using the uh, uh, two helicopters of the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa government for his political for, for his political motives. Uh, after that, uh, uh, after that, we saw uh, that a notice was taken, and that on July 11th, a notice was issued by the National Accountability Bureau on uh, for to, uh, to Imran Khan to be summoned on July the 18th. Now, after that, Imran Khan on July 18th had excused himself uh, to be present inside uh, uh, to be present before the National Accountability Bureau, and that he said that uh, due to election activities, he will not be able to be uh, to, to to be there at National Accountability Bureau in Peshawar. Uh, now, National the uh, and that Peshawar says that they have documented evidence that Imran Khan uh, uh, has uh, utilized the uh, KPK government's helicopters, no, uh, two helicopters, uh, in, in, on multiple occasions, and that uh, he has also paid for them for roughly uh, two point million Pakistani rupees as well. But uh, that would round up to two point twenty eight thousand rupees Pakistani rupees per hour on that seventy four hours usage of the helicopter. Uh, so it is uh, it is currently being investigated now. Imran Khan was summoned today at right. the National Accountability Bureau. Uh, he went in. He was given a 15-15 page, 15 question uh, questions questionnaire by the National Accountability Bureau, and he's been given 15 days as well to answer them in brief, in detail as well. Yes, Krishna. All right. So that's as far as the National Accountability Bureau appearance of Imran Khan is concerned. This even as he's making some crucial decisions about his uh, cabinet. Uh, and I talk to us. What is the latest you're picking up? We do understand it's going to be a very small cabinet of just 18 to 20 people. Absolutely. Uh, we've reported it previously as well, Krishna, that uh, uh, Imran Khan has taken this decision in principle that his, his cabinet will be small. It will be 15 to 20 ministers in all. That would include uh, his advisors as well and his coalition partners. Uh, the PTI has decided, or rather Imran Khan has decided to retain uh, the key ministries that would be the interior, the defense ministry and the foreign ministry with themselves. That means they will not be giving it to their allies. Uh, so on uh, the interior ministry, the probable candidates are Sheikh Rashid and and uh, uh, Parvez Khattak, who was the former chief minister of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. On defense, uh, there are high chances of Shiri Mazari uh, coming onto that uh, portfolio of the defense ministry. Uh, whereas on, on the foreign ministry, there are, there are three contenders. There's, there's Shafkat Mahmood, who's been a, a former civil servant. Then there is uh, Chaudhary Mohammed Server, who had been a former British parliamentarian. And then the, there is Shah Mahmood Qureshi, who was previously the foreign minister of Pakistan during the People's Party tenure as well. In addition to that, there is also one confirmed entrant uh, who will be who will be bagging that uh, ministerial seat that is Asad Umar he's been the former CEO of a corporate giant right. here in Pakistan and he's been he's been to, uh, known as the economic beh brains behind P uh, PTI's policies and he would he is definitely uh, uh, going to be the uh, the finance minister in the PTI tenure yes Krishna Anas Malik our uh, Pakistan bureau chief for joining us with the latest update straight from Islamabad